What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel X-Man & Co. Today we're going to make traditional South African biltong. Stay tuned. Biltong is very traditional to South Africa. Its origin is actually from the African continent. So you can imagine how South Africans love biltong. That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to make it. This is not the only way, but I'm going to show you the basic ingredients. And we like it this way. You could play as much as you like. Add a few things, take a few things away. The world's your oyster. First of all, what you're going to need is some brown vinegar. We like to add some Worcestershire sauce. Over here, we've got some coriander seeds, some peppercorns, flaky sea salt. You don't have to add this, but we like a bit of a kick. So we add some chili flakes. As always, I'll leave the description where it is. I won't move it. As always, I'll leave all the ingredients for you down in the description below and the amounts obviously as well. So just a quick one, what you need is a third of everything except for your chili flakes. So a third of salt, a third of peppercorn and a third of your coriander seeds. Talking about coriander. Coriander is a fragrant antioxidant rich herb that has many culinary uses and health benefits. It may even lower your blood sugar fight infections and promote heart, brain, skin and digestive health. Having said that, let's go roast our coriander seeds. You want to heat up your skillet and then gently, just for 2-3 minutes, roast your coriander. You don't want to burn the coriander seeds, you just want to heat it up slightly, keep turning it, you don't need oil or anything. You obviously, you could do this on the stove at home, you don't need to do it on the coals. You'll notice after about two minutes that coriander seeds are turning brown and at this point you can decide if you want to go on for another minute or so or you can just remove them. Bolton is a cured and dried meat and various types of meat are being used today to produce bolton. You could use even fillet, some people use rum, today we're going to use silver side. Normally brown vinegar is all you need. We like to add our Worcestershire sauce, so you could do 50-50. Our preferred method is a third of this and two thirds of your brown vinegar. In order for you to make biltong, you need a good ventilated area, not too warm, not moist at all. You could just hang your biltong up there in a week you should have biltong. If you like your biltong on the rear side, then take it off earlier, around about four and a half, five days. If you like it dead, then wait that extra two, three days and it'll be perfect for you. Then it's time to crush all your ingredients. The flaky salt is already crushed. We're just going to do this for now and then add the flaky salt at the end. Now that we've got that nice, you need to add your salt. So we're just going to do that and then we'll mix it into a bowl. I'll tell you what, just smelling this, I don't even think we need to make biltong. We can just munch on this. This is amazing. First of all, you want to remove some sinew if you do have. You can see we have a little bit here on the side. So I'm just going to remove that quickly. You can always trim it at the ends. Right, I think I'm happy with this. You could ask your butcher to cut your biltong strips for you. I've decided to take the whole piece of meat, this is silver side, so I can show you guys how to cut it. You want to cut along the grain and not against the grain. Against the grain is when you do rump or ribeye, anything like that. But if you do biltong, along the grain, it's going to help you to eat it and tear it. It's just going to be much more pleasurable. Let's cut this beast. Guys, there's our first piece. Now that we've cut our meat, the next step is to make sure that this meat is preserved. The only way we can do that is to use our mixture of our brown vinegar and our Worcestershire sauce. Another thing to mind as well is to make sure that your meat is the correct length from the top to bottom if you have enough space for what you've cut. 
in our case this is slightly too long for us so we're going to cut a piece off here and we need to do that before we preserve the meat. A very important thing to remember about Poltong is that when they hang there should be ventilation like we spoke about earlier. Another thing to remember is that with Poltong it's not allowed to touch anything while it's hanging, not each other or the sides or the bottom. It will just start to rot over there and you'll be so disappointed. So what you want to do is now marinate and preserve your meat. I've done my mixture in a little squeezy bottle like this. I find that to work perfectly. And then just lay your meat over the solution. A lot of guys believe in soaking it in the mixture. I find that that doesn't really make it better. You just need to make sure the liquid is touching everywhere. You can let it rest in your brown vinegar solution for about anything between 4 and 24 hours. We're going to do four hours. What you could also do is put it in a bowl that you can turn and then every hour turn your bowl. Now that we have all our preserved meat in our container, it's ready for the fridge. One thing that I need to note to you guys is that I've put some spice on with my preservative mixture and a lot of guys don't do that. They just use the brown vinegar and they, they skip the spice step here. I haven't used all of it because I'd like for these spices to really penetrate at this stage give it that extra four hours and then we'll use the rest of the spices and make sure it's nicely covered ready for that dehydrator or your bolt-on machine cheers all right so let's have a look what it looks like there you go you see it's still wet. Some guys might feel they want to pat it down and dry it a bit. I don't really do that. Um, I like to at this stage to add the spices and then we hang them up. So the little bit of vinegar that you have left on the meat is going to help your wrap to stick to it. And we like quite a bit of spice on it. As you can see I've just spiced it and a lot of the spices will fall off and that's what you'll have right there. You can play and add a little bit to the fat. You can really do what you like best. If you want less spice, that's up to you and that's what you do. This is absolutely amazing. It's divine. The aromas coming through. Oh, it feels like we're already eating Bolton. I think it's time to hang these guys up. Okay guys, I like to add newspaper at the bottom because you can have some drippings the first day and a half. There's your first piece, there's your second piece. Now that we have our bolt-on ready in the dehydrator or your bolt-on machine, we're going to give it five days and then we'll meet up here again and We'll have a look and taste it, obviously. In between, we're going to give you some footage and show you the changes. We're going to try and do that, if it's possible. See you guys in a bit. It's been three days since we've put our Biltong into the dehydrator. And I thought, you know what, let's do something different this time. We're going to do three days, four days and five days. Today is day number three. Let's cut the Biltong and see, because you know what, some guys like it wetter than others. Let's first check this bolting out. So, it smells divine. It smells like bolting. It's got the traditional bolting flavor aroma to it. Definitely, if you can look closely, it's fairly firm. Let's cut it now. This is really wet, but I'm sure it's still going to be tasty. Um, so there I've got a piece, you can see it flexes quite a bit. You can definitely see on the outside, if you want to call it bark, it's nice and hard, perfect. This is actually not too bad. Maybe one day too early for myself, 
but I'm still going to give it a go. Cheers. Hmm. Actually very good. Actually very good. I definitely taste the built-on smoky flavor, if you want to call it that. And I think tomorrow's going to be even better. It's day four, guys. Welcome back. It's time for us to cut another piece of built-on. I've chosen two pieces today. Day three, we used the small piece. So basically that would be on par with this piece. Taking a bigger piece as well. Obviously the thickness, there's quite a big difference. You can see this one's curling up already. It's quite thin over there. Which means this will be a bit drier. This should be quite a bit wetter. But tomorrow, day five, I think we're going to get the perfect piece for us. You can see it's quite drier than before. You can see this ring here. It's coming to the middle. Wet in the middle, but this is very close to what we like. And look at all those spices there. That's beautiful. And then for the bigger piece, obviously like I explained, this piece will be slightly better than the one I just cut because it's thicker. Now it's time to taste and I think I'm going to grab one of the big pieces. Mm. Very nice, I actually love it. This is good, very nice. You can still taste all the spices. Slightly wet, like I said, this guy. This will be slightly drier, it's smaller. You can actually see it right there. It's beautiful. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow, day five. We've learned throughout experience that we love day five. Our bolton at day five is exactly the way we like it. You might find early in the video day three works for you or day four. And I'm hoping that this video is doing exactly that, showing you what you like. Without further ado, I know you've been waiting for this. Let's cut this bolton. I'm going to cut this bolton straight down the middle. Still cuts easy. As you can all see, I do have my bolt-on cut here. I don't use my bolt-on cutter all the time. I actually like the more manly side of it, cutting your own bolt-on and chunks, you know? I just love it that way. On the other hand, you are more than welcome to use your bolt-on cutter to cut it. Um, let's have a look at this. You can see it's nicely cured on the outside and over there and the only soft part you have is right in the middle and this is exactly how we like it. We like it soft as you can see I can squish it there but not too soft, still a bit of a bark and you've got your spices there that's definitely helping with the flavour. I think it's time to taste this baby. I love it. You can see the ice is working at the background for some more cold ones. Not too chewy, it's just perfect. I love it. Guys, this is truly amazing. I'm glad I took you guys on a tour with me while making traditional South African biltong. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And yeah, if there's any questions, comment below. Let us know. You know the story, guys. If you like what you're doing, like, share, subscribe. Enable those notifications so you get notified as soon as we upload a new video. Thanks for watching. We cannot do it without you. We'll see you on the next one. There you go. This is life.